Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Gretchen, physical therapist and multiple sclerosis certified specialist. And today we are going to be talking about the difference between gym-based exercises, specifically with weights and machinery versus functional exercises at home. And today specifically, we're going to be talking about a squat-based exercise versus a leg press exercise. This differentiation is really important, but before we even get to the differentiation, I want to point out to you that any exercise and any movement is better than no exercise and no movement. So regardless of what I'm about to say, if you love machinery, if you love using the leg press machine and it just makes you feel good, it makes you feel strong, please do that. Or if you love squats, please do that. Please do whatever you need to do to stay consistent. And not only that, but to feel successful. A big part of exercising, regardless of if you have MS or not, but especially if you have MS, is to feel successful. Because if you feel unsuccessful for long enough, you are not going to stay consistent. Your brain does not want you to do something consistently that doesn't feel good to you. So it's really important that you feel good about what you're doing. So regardless of what I'm about to say, exercise and just some form of movement is better than no movement. But let's dive into it because that's what we're here to talk about today. When it comes to exercising at home and exercising in the gym with machinery, there's two exercises in particular that resemble each other, but it's different if you're doing it without a piece of machinery versus with a piece of machinery. So we're gonna compare the two and we're going to talk about which one is better for you, specifically if you have multiple sclerosis. So one option is going to be the squat and one option is the leg press. This is an example of what a leg press looks like. A leg press is a machine at the gym that you are typically sitting for and you are going to press your legs away from you and then towards you. And as you can see, your upper body stays stationary, but your legs are pushing away from you and then bending so your knees are bending and straightening. So in this specific situation, I'm comparing an, a machine like this one, like the seated leg press, to a more functional exercise that you can do at home without any equipment. And that home-based exercise is a simple standing squat. So what you're gonna do for a squat is to stand with your feet about shoulder distance apart, tighten your core muscles, hips hinge backward, and then you bend your knees and then straighten. So as you may be able to see, just simply from me demonstrating this exercise, it's a very similar movement to the leg press. The main difference is that I am standing right now, but the, for the leg press, I was sitting the whole time. Now standing squats can be in the middle of a room like I am right now, or you can use a chair behind you. If you're using a chair behind you, you have two options. One option is to just hover, so you don't actually sit down, you're just hovering. And then the second option is to actually sit down and then stand up and sit down and stand up. And there's lots of techniques that we can review of how to do that safely and well without having to throw yourself forward. You can also use your armrest. But the point of this video today is to demonstrate the difference between the leg press and the standing squat. Now, when comparing the leg press to a squat exercise, which one is going to be best for you? It's going to depend on what your goals are. If you just have a goal of being strong, of just generally getting more strength, you just wanna move, you just wanna exercise, then either one is going to be best for you. But if you have a goal of standing up with more strength and better balance, and sitting down with better strength, better control, better balance, then the squat is definitely going to be the better one for you. And the reason for this is simple. It's because of the position that you're in in the real life situation versus the exercise. In real life situations, if you are attempting to stand up and sit down, as you saw me do over on that chair, you are 
physically moving to a fully standing position and then a seated position and then fully standing. And with the leg press, you are remaining seated the entire time. When you have MS, your brain and spinal cord and neural pathways do not have the same carryover, meaning it's very possible that you could have really great strength in a specific exercise when you're lying on the ground. But when you go to stand up and you use that same muscle that you have good strength in when lying down, that muscle doesn't work when you're standing because there's no carryover. Your brain and neural pathways don't understand that that strength should also be able to work when you're standing. So when you have MS, it's really important that the position of your exercise is as close as possible to the real life situation. Another example of this is if you had a goal of sidestepping, basically standing up and taking some steps to either side. This is a very common thing that we need to do within our home or especially if we're walking out in the community and we need to step out of the way of something or someone. So an exercise that you could do at the gym is an exercise where it's hip abduction and you are sitting down, your legs are touching, and you, you have weights on the outside of both of your legs and you open your legs pushing against that weight and then you close your legs and then you open and close. You are seated the whole time and you will feel the burn in your outer hip muscles. It's a good hip abduction exercise to strengthen the outside part of your hips. But as you hopefully will guess by now, it's not very functional. You will likely gain strength in your outer hip muscles in a seated position, but you'll go to stand up and take a step to the side and those muscles won't be working. Therefore, a better exercise that you can do at home to improve side stepping is to simply practice stepping to the side. And of course, you can use a mobility aid, a rollator, trekking poles, walking stick, whatever you need, but you can practice stepping to the side. There's a few ways you can do this. One is just what I'm doing right now where you're stepping to one side and then to the other side. However, if that's too challenging, you can stand on one leg and move just one leg out to the side and then back down, then out to the side and back down. And of course, make sure you always do both at the same time. These exercises standing work the same outside muscle groups in our hip as the seated exercise, but you're more likely to see that carryover in function and activity with this exercise because you're standing and your brain understands that the strength you're gaining on the outside of your hips standing can directly transfer to standing and stepping to the side. Whereas if you were seated, your brain might not understand that the strength you're gaining in the outside of your hips should also work when you're standing. So the position that you're exercising in makes a difference. So focus on that as you're thinking about what exercises you might want to include in your routine and what specific functional goals you have to feel better and stronger and more balanced throughout the day. I hope you found this helpful. If you like information like this and want to learn more, you can find me on my Instagram page, Dr.Gretchen, my YouTube account, Dr. Gretchen Holly, or my podcast, The Missing Link.